Mahabharata is depicting all sorts of people. Every kind of character that can exist on the planet is there. Ravana went straight to Rakshasthal and saw this young woman. He thought, she's Parvati, took her and went home, whoever the god is. If he says, I'm responsible for these people, I'm not responsible for those people, is he fired or no? My question to you is, uh, in Mahabharat, uh, we see Amba, she's so determined to take revenge on Bhishma and she goes to Shiva and Shiva actually grants her that boon. So, why would somebody want to live their whole life just with the sole intention of taking revenge on somebody and how would this affect them? Thank you. Well, whether we like it or not, there are such people in the world, all right? Yes or no? Are they there or not? Yes. They're there. So Mahabharata is depicting all sorts of people. Every kind of character that can exist on the planet is there. There are over hundred thousand characters representing the best, the worst, in between every range is there. So she is one. Uh, something horrible happened to somebody, an abuse happened to somebody, and that person not willing to forget. Some will become hurt and wounded, some will become angry and vengeful, depending on their own nature and also the situation in which we exist. So she is uh, in a royal setup. Here, uh, vengeance is considered honor. Vengeance is not considered vengeance. Vengeance is considered as a virtue. When somebody hurts a king or a queen, they must go and finish them. Till you finish them, your job is not done. This is the culture that in which she is. We must not look at it from today's time and today's culture that you are in. That time she is in a royal family, she is a princess and she is insulted. She feels horribly insulted by what happened, you know what happened to her life. Now she wants to, at any cost, extract a prize for that. So she goes for that. So she is asking Shiva, the question is why Shiva is assisting her, is that it? Is it the question? Yes. Uh, she was like that only <laughs> because, uh, you know, this happened to him. Once Ravana, you heard of Ravana? Ravana came to Shiva and worshipped him and praised him and glory. So he loved him so much and he said, you ask whatever you want, I'll give you. And that guy says, I want your wife. Shiva is in… Uh, mood like that. He says, okay, take her. Parvati is having a bath in the Manasa rover close by and this guy goes looking for Parvati to take her home. Then somebody goes and tells her, Shiva has granted permission that this man who's come from somewhere in the south, he can take you and go with him. He said, yes, he lost his mind. So Parvati took a frog and made this frog into a beautiful young woman and left her in a lake adjacent to Manasarovar, which is today called as Rakshasthal. So Ravana went straight to Rakshasthal and saw this young woman. He thought, she's Parvati, took her and went home. Then he realized she has come out of a frog. But she was Mandodari, that's why she's called Mandodari, one who came out of a frog. But she was beautiful and wonderful woman, so she became his queen and stayed there. But his… his thing about wanting to take somebody's wife again took him to Ayodhya, you know <laughs> You know all the trouble, that's another matter. But you must understand this, that which you are referring to as the highest or the divine, cannot be discriminatory, isn't it? Hello? If God says, whoever the God is, if He says, I'm responsible for these people, I'm not responsible for those people, is He fired or no? Hello? Fired or no? Because essentially, 
It is a response, a limitless response. When something responds to everybody, if their thing is right, then we say this is divine. It only responds to me, not to you. This is not divine, this is my party, isn't it? <laughs> Hello? So when Ramana, as a great devotee, he worshipped him, he said, ask whatever you want, but that guy should have civilization. But he has nothing like that. He says, I want your wife. He says, okay, take her and go. So in that context, she burns in front of Shiva and says she's doing austerities after austerities, putting herself to extreme difficulties and says, all I want is to kill this man, give me the power. He said, okay, have it. But this does not mean it'll lead to your well-being. A man was driving in Mexico and he ran out of gas. Then he walked and there he saw a local monastery where monks were living with very meager resources. He said, my car is run out of gas, do something. So the monk said, See, we don't have anything else here, we don't have cars, we don't have gas, but I can give you mule, mule. You ride on the mule to the next town and then you can get gas there and come back. Only thing is we have trained the mules like this, you sit on it, you don't beat it, you don't do all that, you just say, play, praise the Lord, it will go. When you want it to stop, you say, Amen, it will stop. So he sat on it and said, praise the Lord. It went and went and went, did the whole day it traveled. Then he saw the mule was going straight towards a cliff edge. He wants to stop it, he's doing this, that, but he's forgotten the mantra. He tried everything but the mule is just going straight to the edge of the cliff. It came right here about to take its next step. Then he remembered and said, oh man, it stopped. He looked down two thousand feet below, oh my God, praise the Lord <laughs> This happens, you know.